everyone, it's Asa, and welcome to my video on how to use MetaTFT's Advanced Explorer. This tool was rolled out by Guthers about five days ago in order to help players make use of low sample size data. So you can find this tool on MetaTFT.com. There's a few different ways to get to Explorer, but you can just find it under stats. And let's just say we want to look for uh, brand's best item, so let's just go ahead and put brand with three items. By default, advanced mode is going to be off. So if we look at brand's items, you can see it's by default sorted by play rate. Uh, Shojin, Jewel Gauntlet, now Striker's Flail, which is replacing Guard Breaker, is actually a little bit better. Are his most built items, and you can see they're all performing pretty well. A lot of the items at the top, you kind of expect to perform well. They're built often on brand. Um, if we scroll down, we can see some items that are built like less frequently, like Deathblade brand, and you can see it's performing pretty poorly. 4.5 average placement. Uh, of course, brand doesn't use Deathblade very well, whereas like Shoujin is a 4.1 average placement, so a lot better for brand. If we use advanced mode, there's going to be a few things. We can change the variable, average or worst case. I'll talk about that in a bit. We can turn error bars and change the confidence level. Confidence level just means that the data means we are, I have it set to 95% right now. That means we are 95% sure that, I'm gonna use error bars as well. We're 95% sure that Deathcat, for example, averages between a 4.01 and a 4.05 using this sample size. So Deathcap has a pretty sizable sample size. So this is really tight, right? Like this is basically 4.0, it's extremely tight. But if we look at some really low play rate items, like let's say games where we have a Radiant Morello on brand, um, we're only using current patch data and Diamond Plus. So there's actually not that many games yet. Uh, again, the patch is pretty new as well. There's only 153 games. So we're 95% sure the true average placement of this item is between 3.97 and 4.57. If we were to play a billion more games of brand with more Morello, assuming things don't change, we're 95% sure based on this data, it would fall in this range. So right now the big number is showing the upper bound because keep in mind this tool is designed to help players make use of low data stats. So again, we are 95% sure this is the worst we can be doing. So if you're pretty comfortable with this number, 4.57 is not that good. But if we look at something that might be a little bit better on brand, uh, like snipers, for example, even though it has barely more play rate, the average placement is so good, we're very confident snipers is really good. On oh, there's actually two snipers, really interesting, from Call of Chaos probably. We're very confident this combination of items, two snipers, is very, very good on brand, uh, just because of, um, despite the low sample, because of the really good average placement. So, again, the big number just shows your upper bound. The error bar will show you the entire thing. So snipers, you can actually see, might even be better. We're saying we're 95% sure it's at worst at 3.66, but it might be as good as a 3.18. It could even be better, but again, that's 99, 95% sure. If you want to be even more confident, you can change this to 99. I generally recommend 95. That's kind of just what scientists tend to call standard error in pretty much every field. Uh, but now that I've talked about error bars, let's go ahead and turn that off. So again, this is the upper bound. Basically, it can't be worse than this, or it's very unlikely. I, I shouldn't say it can't be because 95% chance, there's still that five, there's still that two and a half percent chance on each side. Uh, but it's very unlikely to be. So this is pretty safe if you use this. Um, one thing that this does not take into account is sampling bias, which just means, so let's sort by average placement. You can see like Edge of Night, for example, is all the way at the top. But intuitively, I know that Edge of Night is not that great of a brand item. Um, but you can see the frequency is only 400 games. So one thing, if you see an outlier like this, you can go and investigate. Uh, you can go ahead and click into here, and you will, now my filters are brand with Edge of Night, and we can actually look at recent games where people played this and see what they're winning with. And you can see oftentimes it's when brand's not used as a primary carry. This one has like a four-star Poppy. This is three-star Vigar. 
This is like four three star one cost with both three star Seraphine and three star Zyra itemized. So it's like it doesn't really need brand items that much. Um, so there's like some things here. This is Edge Knight, Samira, and Brand. Could potentially be from Not Today. I don't know for sure. But you can see basically, if you see something that kind of stands out, you can kind of look at the games and maybe draw some conclusions that way. Whoops. Put Brand back in there with three items. So this is worst case scenario. You can also do average. So again, with the error bars, you can see that there's a little bar. There's a little bar in here. If we scroll down for some of these, sorry, we're looking at units. If we scroll down, we're looking at some wider bars like uh, Radiant, Striker Slail, for example. So we can do average instead. I know Guthers actually recommended using worst case for the purposes of this tool. I personally think average is easier to look at, turn error bars off, just because it will show you almost exactly the same data. It's a little bit different, but I think it's a little easier to read because especially for the place change, which is basically what you might be familiar with as delta, it just means your average placement with this item compared to without this item. Um, so you can look at it here. So. This is a kind of easier, if you just do, for example, if we do worst case, you'll see that a lot of these are plus. Um, the further down we go, the more that are going to be plus, just because the bar is going to be a lot wider. But if we do average, then you can see everything kind of like centers around zero, uh, which makes sense. If you added up everything, it would be zero. But yeah, it's just easier to see like which ones are minus or plus. I will say, for ones that are really high frequency, like we tend to know these items are good. Um, if it has a positive plus change, it could be an indicator that players are over prioritizing them, but it could also be that this player is just, this unit is just played in some other comps, such as like the Mundo Alistair reroll as well. So I think that's everything I want to talk about with the meta tft advanced explorer but there is one more thing that a lot of players don't know about that i actually think is more important than everything i've talked about up until this point in the video which is meta tft's item tier list so if we just go to regular units and go to brand um just like kind of their default functionality and we can see the items tiered here this is automatically taking into account sampling bias and survivorship bias of, for example, if you end up with a last list for brand, it's likely you just got that off a late late game carousel, or it's likely that brand's not your main carry, so there, there's some bias pulling it up. But last list for still D, despite being like plus 11, plus point 11, sorry. Uh, so basically, unless you're really looking to dive deep into stats, I would actually recommend using this. I think going from top to bottom, it will generally give you a great idea of like the 10 best brand items in like pretty decent order, honestly. There's still going to be a little bit of stat biases, but I would highly, highly recommend people use this as their default. Uh, you can see actually the top three brand items by conventional wisdom that pretty much all North American Challenger players agree on show up as the top three, and then the ones right below them are just really, really good brand items as well. So Again, this video was most about mostly about Meta TFT's new Advanced Explorer tool, but if you're not looking to spend a ton of time looking at stats, I would highly just recommend using their built-in algorithm for the item tier list. Again, it's not going to be perfect. Every single unit is going to be affected by different biases, but overall, I think this will give you a really good idea. I've been like using Brand as an example, but we can use a different unit, like let's say Zaya, for example and we look at her best items. These are pretty much what conventional wisdom, if you ask Dish Soap, if you ask Wajan Iverson, if you ask Sessico, what Zaya's best items are in order, it's pretty close to this. That's gonna wrap it up for this video on using Meta TFT to get item data. Uh, you can also use it for full builds or unit data. Um, that will work as well, it's all the same. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the Discord, and thanks for watching.